Roughly 60% of golfers struggle with the slice. If that sounds like you, this video then is for you. Today with TrackMan, we'll show you why you're slicing the ball and a few simple steps to fix it. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold the Second Swing Golf. Today joined by Thomas Campbell once again, master fitter at Second Swing outside on the driving range at Les Bolstead. And today we're talking about the common golfer and the slice that they might struggle with, Thomas. Uh, roughly 60% of golfers are struggling with that slice that, uh, well, for a right-handed golfer, that left to right ball flight, that can kind of get out of control sometimes. So today we're gonna demonstrate with the help of TrackMan why golfers slice the ball and then a few things they can do to maybe fix it. Yeah, I mean, quite simply, it comes down to your club path, your face angle relationships, so your face to path, and also where you're hitting on the club face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those all those three things we're gonna be looking at with TrackMan, and actually I'll be kind of the, the test sample today. I'll hit some slices. We'll look at the data from the slices, and then we'll show, again, face angle, club path, those types of things with TrackMan, how you can fix those, and the result is a much straighter ball flight. really cut across that one. Drew, let's take a look at the numbers and explain why that ball was curving to the right. So first thing looking at the numbers, you have a lot of spin on the ball with that ball curving to the right. Carry distance and total distance is significantly shorter than what I'm used to seeing. What we're seeing with your club path and your face angle relationship is on average your club path was 12 degrees to the left. Your face angle, believe it or not, was three degrees closed, but because your path is 12 degrees to the left, Okay. Your face to path was nine degrees open. Okay. Anytime your face to path is open, the ball is going to go to the right. Yeah, and then when it's nine degrees, it's probably a pretty significant curve to the right. Significant, yes. When you're hitting those shots, 223 feet of curve on average. That's a lot. That's a lot. So, how do I fix that? So, we need to fix your club path and face angle relationship. Mm -hmm. So, we need to get you to feel like you're swinging a little bit more in to out to fix your club path. So, think in baseball terminology, we want you to swing out towards right field or down towards first base. First fixing mm -hmm. path, so the first couple might feel like the ball starts to the right and stays to the right, then fix face angle. Okay. So, first we need to fix is alignment. A lot of times I see someone with an out to in swing path, generally speaking, their feet and their shoulders are fairly open to the target. Okay. So let's get a couple of alignment sticks down here on the ground. So your target here, when you're hitting, you want to make sure your club face is pointing at the target. We also want our feet to be parallel to that target. Mm -hmm. And if we need to exaggerate an in to out club path, we can definitely try and drop that right foot back a little bit there as well. So naturally that's just changing your alignment sure. to try and get you to swing down that line. Well, that ball actually started a lot straighter and actually curved over a little yeah. to the left. Mm -hmm. A couple of other drills that I do recommend um, to help people out is I took some golf balls out of this box. I recommend okay. taking the balls out rather than hitting them. <laughs> but where you're hitting, if you're going to tee the ball up, I'll let you tee it up here. And you can use, it doesn't have to be a box of balls, it can be a head cover or it could be a, a, bucket, of, a, a bucket of some sort. So we're trying to get your club path to be a little bit more in to out. Okay. So the idea is that we don't want to hit that box and I have that angled a little bit more to the mm -hmm. right side yep. to try and promote that little bit more of an in to out sure. club path. So you kind of have it almost, the angle. it looks like it's facing a little bit right, but it's that's, facing kind of, a little that's right. on purpose. Yeah. Because if you have a out to in club path, you may come in and that heel of that yeah. club may actually hit right. that box. Right. You can't even, you know, you got to come in. This is going to yep. promote it, that. I guess in to out for sure. Yep. That was smoked right there. Yeah, that was good. That felt really good. That was really, really good. Another thing you can do, and I love using alignment sticks, is also have that little guide. I mentioned out towards right field mm -hmm. or out towards first base. So I'll put an alignment stick down on the, on the ground as a guide. You can also put in a stick down here on your target line stick it in the ground and when you're hitting shots you want the ball to start on this side of the, the stick right side. not on this side if right. it starts on this side we know our club path is out to in if it starts on this side we know our club path is in to out sure and then the other thing you can do is we can set up a, a, a golf bag kind of stick something in here on, on the golf bag to try and force you when you're swinging we want to make sure that we feel like we're coming more in to out and underneath 
Right. That which causes you to swing out towards mm -hmm. the, the right side. Is that common, you know, slice tendency is up here over the top versus yep. down and then through. Yeah. So that all fixes club path. However, we've got to make sure we've got to have that, that club face turning over sure. here as well. So a lot of times I see someone that slices the ball, sometimes their grip can be a little bit too weak. Mm -hmm. So ideally, when you're setting up, you want to be two to three knuckles. You definitely want to see that logo on that glove right. at address. So you're saying it would, like a weak grip would look like this, right? Correct. And then you kind of turn yep. it over like this. Turn it with, over with a little bit. Top hand. Swing out towards right field and release yep. the hands over. Yep, okay. Let's see a couple more. That one almost hooked. Yep, so that one you got your face angle there to turn over a little bit more. So you're, that was really good there. All right, well Thomas, I think my slice is cured and I was almost hitting a draw at the end there. Yeah, you were. So believe it or not, you weren't actually even swinging as fast as you were when you were hitting a slice. However, you picked up some significant yardage. So taking a look at the numbers briefly, you picked up ball speed, you picked mm -hmm. up eight miles an hour ball speed, your efficiency number went up, so your smash factor is a lot higher. Your launch angle was a little bit higher and your spin significantly dropped. You went from 48.85 on average to about 16.56. Wow. Now that spin, yes, is still a little bit on the low side, but you can see what happens when you have less spin. You went from carrying at 236, going 250, to carrying at 282, going 317. Yeah, I'll take that, I'll yeah. take that. So how did we get there? Well, the biggest thing, biggest change was your club path and face angle relationship. So originally when you were hitting those slices, your club path was 12 degrees to the left. Mm -hmm. Well, with these changes we made to your setup and in-swing work, your club path actually was now five degrees in to out. So a 17 degree change. That's a big, big change. Your face angle, believe it or not, was slightly open to the target, but because your path is a little bit more in to out now, it was now closed to your path. So we're now talking minus three. So what does that mean? Well, that means a lot less curve and actually ball curving to the left. So we actually might even need to go back the other way just a little <laughs> bit to really straighten you out. But you can see the big difference is what happens when you improve your club path and your face angle. Right, and that's all swing related too. And we didn't even talk about adjustments that can be made to the golf club also. Right, yeah, so uh, when, when you're doing a fitting with us, one thing we will do is we'll talk about making adjustments to the hosel mm -hmm. or changing the center of gravity around. One little tip you can definitely do is if you have more loft on the golf club, it is much easier to turn that club over. So if you have too little loft, generally the ball is going to curve to the right. And you have a tailor-made driver right there. Mm -hmm. If you set that thing to higher, what you're actually doing is you're closing the face angle four degrees. Right, and that'll promote that right to left a little bit more versus the other way going down in loft will force that thing a little bit right. So Right, and finally club head design. Mm -hmm. There are some more fade bias drivers out there and there's some drivers that you can adjust the center of gravity around. Mm -hmm. So that's one other way that you're able to get that ball to curve or make it at least a little bit of a bias. But end of the day, club path, face angle relationship, that's how you can hit the ball so much straighter. Right, I think a lot of golfers are gonna learn a ton from this simple demonstration here. Again, 60% of golfers struggle with that slice. Hopefully this can help a lot of players.